Hi there, this is uh, just one example of how to do distributed loads. Uh, and I'm just going to use this beam, the cantilever beam, for an example. But uh, what I want to do is just simplify this distributed load so that we can understand how to simplify the load so it allows us to calculate um, reactionary forces much simpler makes that whole process much easier. So, um, Let's first off start with uh, looking at the distributed load. The general shape of it is like this. It's not exactly a triangle. It's not exactly a square. So there's a few different approaches we could do. We could extend this and make it into a, 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 two, a, a triangle and then subtract out this area, which is an option. Or you could do what I'm going to do, split it right down the middle. You have one area right here, and you have two area right here. All up to you. you you got to decide. Um, I, I forgot to put the numbers here, but this is 200 pounds per foot. And right down here, let's just call it, I don't know, 20 pounds per foot. Okay. So let's just split these apart. First off, you have your triangle, which is going to be 200 minus 20, so that would be 180 on this side, and 10 feet right here. So technically, the area of this little area 2, whatnot, it's going to be 100 or 1800. Oh, 1800 divided by 2. Goodness. Sorry about that. It'll be 1800 divided by 2. So your area 2 will equal 900 pounds. See, so good thing, that's why you look at your work and you, you check it. <laughs> um, then the bottom portion, right here, and this is just going to be 20 right here, and still 10 feet. So, 20 times 10, that's that, that would be 200 pounds. That's 200 pounds. That's area 1. And I just call it area because um, if you multiply the two, you get, you get a weight. You could use a weight, but when you're looking at 2D problems, it, it's always relative to area as well. So it, it's appropriate to have either either. Just make sure you know what you're doing. So um, this is more of a one-dimensional problem uh, f for our practical uses because it's just a beam. Beam problems are typically one-dimensional. Um, and what you'll find is, first of all, let's do the bottom portion, the square, area 1. That's 200 times the distance, which is half of 10 feet, which is going to be 5 feet, so that's 5, plus the area of like A2 area will be 900 times the distance, which is going to be 2 thirds the way, 2 thirds the long way here, so it will be 2 thirds from the point, considering this is the point, 2 thirds this way, right? 2 thirds of 10 feet, which, I mean, you could you could work that out. I mean, 20, 20 divided by 3, that's 6.67, right? All over 1,100 pounds. So what you get from that result is 6.36 feet. That's where our x bar is. And what you can do is you can take this portion, this total area, or really it's total weight, and put it at this point right here. So what would that look like? You have your wall here. You would go out 6.36 or feet and, and that's where you would put your force that was going downwards at 
1100 pounds. Now just so you know, in a lot of beam analysis and other advanced topics like energy methods and such, this is not an equivalent method. However, if you're looking simply for reactionary forces along a beam, this is acceptable. So just so you know, this is not okay to do in more advanced methods, but for now, in the reactionary methods, this is okay to put the total weight here right at the centroid. I hope you enjoyed the video sets. Um, uh, just leave a message if you'd like more more examples, and uh, I will be following up with probably more some distribution uh, distributed load problems as well. So, hope you guys have a good day.